So there was a Democratic focus group that CNN did here, and the host was absolutely stunned by some of the answers. Uh, this is like super educational for the establishment and how their thinking is just so wrong and so insular in their, in their own little elitist bubble. So let's take a look and then we'll discuss. Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, your Are you thoughts. Sure? She's a badass. Oh, Man. oh my God. Yay. Okay. I love yes. her. Wow. What I mean, a woman. Amazing. And Again. That's yes. I mean, she's asking the right questions. She, I don't feel like she's playing games. I'm like, so excited about her. She is smart. She is intelligent. And I cannot wait to see what else she does. Well, I know and she's you know, got too, the Democratic Party nervous. And I mean, you know, in a way, they should be nervous. Sure. Because, you know, she yeah. does represent the, the, new, the new guard, the new generation. I think she really kind of personifies, you know, where we expected Ooh. things to go. Down the she line. is the candidate of the future. She has got this mm. down pat. And she has also nailed it in, as a woman in a male-dominated field. This is how we women in the male-dominated fields, we have to work like this all the time. She is the candidate of the future. She Get ready for her, because she's coming. The formula would be for a Democrat to be pragmatic and more centrist, show of hands. Two of you feel that way. How many of you feel that the time is right for a progressive and that's what would win? Carol? We're ready for progressive candidates. They've won all over the country. Um, and I think we need bold, strong leadership. And you find that in the progressives. I think that we had the standard bearer for the the kind of pragmatic uh, centrist candidate in Hillary Clinton in 2016. And Donald Trump is now the president. He is not your average political uh, uh, candidate. So we we really need to try to think outside the box because, you know, it seems like the dude is made of rubber. Like anything you throw at him just bounces off. I mean, there's nothing that sticks. How many of you would like to see Joe Biden get in? Show of hands. Mm. What's happening, Russell? <laughs> oh, no. His time is done. I'll be honest. I used to think like, you know, because obviously he was riding like kind of the Obama wave. And I thought he was the I thought he was the person that would unite the party. But to be honest, you know, Senator Biden really comes from the kind of the good old boy politics right. of the past. I don't think Joe Biden represents that new thing that we need. Mm -hmm. We He's just behind. we need a new economy. We need a new yeah. politics and Absolutely. we need someone different. What will you be voting on in 2020 if the, if the election were held today? Mary, what's your big issue that you feel you would vote on? You know, my big issue truly is about climate change. Mm -hmm. I think because it, it touches everyone and it touches jobs and it touches our future. And we cannot have a conversation about politics without considering what we are doing to the planet. And I mean, you, you see people freaking out over the wall and these migrants coming up from uh, from Central and South America. I mean, that's going to be like nothing compared to the migration we will see as climate change really starts to uh, to affect the sea level rise. I mean, the ice is melting fast. My big issue is the global world order. I mean, we have a president who has humiliated the United States on the global stage by cozying up to dictators, by having a falling in love with the leader of North Korea by uh, having a relationship with Russia that makes him giddy and excited. I echo all the sentiments on climate change. I also am going to be looking for a candidate that's going to take on sensible gun regulation. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big one for me. That's, that's maybe the biggest one for me. I think overall, like whoever I support, they have to be for Medicare for all. It's hurting so many people. It's something Democrats have worked on for since, since FDR, and we absolutely need to have that. It, like, healthcare just needs to be a human right. All of you ended up being Hillary voters. So does Hillary have a role in 2020? Should no. she campaign no. for? stay away. No. Why is that? I, I, lo I love you, Hillary. <laughs> I love you, I love you, but stay away. We are so divided right now that anything that has Hillary on it is automatically going to separate us again. I just think her time is done. I think it's been, it, it's done. We, we do need something new. Do you feel the same way about President Obama? Should he campaign for sure. who? For, yes, he, he should stump? campaign. He's yes. a great campaigner. He's very uh, beloved, and he also has a, a tremendous connection to all the people that he that that love him. Uh, he has a base still, and that base is very strong. And he has, I think, a, an authoritative 
voice against Trump that we're going to need in this campaign. So that was all really interesting. I, I agree with most of what was said there. There are some points of disagreement that I'll get into, but let's start with that last point with Obama. Um, what's interesting about Obama is that he's so likable as a person that um, his approval rating remains massively high, despite the fact that um, his neoliberal record was a massively mixed bag. In some ways, it was just utterly disastrous. In other ways, it was... Um, positive. So, you know, I, I did this long segment. I'm not going to get into too much of it now because we've just spoken about it a million times before and we're beating a dead horse here, but go check out the segment I did when Obama left office. I think I called it Obama's report card. It's like an hour long segment or something like that where I go into everything Obama did policy wise. And I say, here are the positives, here are the negatives. And then I gave a grade at the end of it in terms of how I think he was as president. Um, so go check out that segment now. Uh, but uh, suffice to say, he's a massively mixed bag. He's done some horrendous things, increasing drone strikes. Uh, you know, he's done some some positive things like the Iran deal. But bottom line is, his approval rating is still massively high. So even though he kind of represents the old style politics too, and that he's a corporate centrist, he's also so liked that I, he would not have the same effect that Hillary Clinton campaigning in 2020 would. I think if Hillary, I think that they're so right when they go after Hillary and they're like, no, she should have no role in 2020. Totally true. Her approval rating is down in the 30s. She's still more unpopular than Trump and Trump's been screwing up the country for a couple of years. Uh, whereas Obama, his approval rating is about 60%, even though he's done some questionable things since leaving office, going to give $400,000 speeches at Wall Street and terrible... But his approval rating is 60%. So even though Obama has a very corporate centrist record, he doesn't have that stench to him. And he even has done, on, on, on multiple occasions, he's kind of, unlike Hillary, who kind of shits on the left flank of the party, Obama, even though he gaslights the left flank a lot, but he does do a lot of rhetoric that's like, these guys are great. Like, he spoke about how Bernie Sanders is the actual populist and Donald Trump is not a populist at all. And so I think that Obama is popular enough and he has a strong enough personality where if he were to campaign in 2020 and help whoever the Democrat is, it would help. It would help. Even though, again, we have massive mixed feelings on his record. Okay? So they're kind of right about that. I'm split on the question as to whether or not he should campaign. I think it would help, but I also think we need to get past his neoliberal ideology. Um, they're right about Hillary. She definitely shouldn't run. Even all of them who liked Hillary were like, I, just don't do it. It's not going to help. Did you see how shocked the CNN host was when Joe Biden got zero love? How telling is that, man? I mean, that's so telling. He got zero love. And... I think that's correct because he could have, if he wanted to run, he could have tried to embrace Uncle Joe populism, but he didn't do that. In fact, he did the opposite. He made crystal clear that if he does run, which he's likely to run, he is going to embrace the moderate road, the centrist road. He's going to say, no, I'm the, I'm the middle of the ground option. Because every time he's opened his mouth in the past six months, he's pissed off the Democratic base. He was just praising frickin' Mike Pence the other day. So, you know, and, and we covered a segment where he was speaking at some event, and he was like, I've been accused by the New York Times of liking Republicans. Well, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And it's like, oh, thank you for being a glib, smug asshole. That's not the point. The point is, policy-wise, you've agreed way too much with them, and that's not what the Democratic base wants. Dipshit. So... He's getting no love. He's decided to embrace that corporate centrism, thinking it'll actually help him politically. He's misread the political situation worse than anybody, which is crazy, because there was a time when you could argue uh, Joe Biden was actually to the left of Obama in some respects. Now, no way you can, because he's embracing the corporate centrism, reminding you of all the negative things about him. And um, they're right that he's not the future. They say he's part of the, the old guard of politics, the good old boys club. That's right, he is. Um, but the other incredibly telling things, they were fawning over Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Fawning over her. You want to know why? For so long, Democrats have, have been put front and center, and they're supposed to, like, apologize and bend over backwards and do whatever the right wing wants. 
Whereas Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez comes up, and on the overwhelming majority of the issues, she's just like, yeah, no, I'm a leftist, here's what I stand for, and I'm not going to back down. And these people are like, oh, thank God, we got one that kind of agrees with us and will fight for what we want. So they love her, they were fawning over her. Um, when asked, you want somebody more pragmatic or more progressive? Two out of six said more pragmatic. Four out of six said more progressive. 100% right. And then the best point was, somebody said, well, we had Hillary Clinton. She was the standard bearer for the pragmatic center, and she lost. This is not a normal political time. And when they were asked what their most important issues were, we got climate change, um, gun reform, and Medicare for all. Agree, all those are super important, and I agree. Um, but the one where I disagreed is obviously global world order is under fucking threat, and he's cozying up to dictators. Listen, Trump, before Trump, the U.S. supported 73% of the world's dictators. So we've always cozied up to dictators. We've always been buddy-buddy with Saudi Arabia and a bunch of others. So that's just not a good argument. It's like we've always propped up dictators, and it's not like Trump came in and he, it's like unique to him. No, he just kind of drops the facade of human rights concern and is just like, yeah, I like dictators. Whereas the other ones propped him up and pretended like they didn't prop him up. <laughs> so I actually don't, I, I don't go after Trump on that front at all. If anything, the one thing she's citing is like a massive negative for Trump, like the Kim Jong-un thing. That's the one best thing I think he's done is yes, even though Kim Jong-un's a horrible person, we don't want war. We want to make peace. So they're trying to get a peace deal and John Bolton sabotaging it. But if they get a peace deal, I'll be incredibly happy, man, because I'm not a partisan hack. I just care about peace. So uh, the one thing she goes after him for the most is the one thing I'm like, oh, that's the best thing he's done. So anyway, that's the one point I disagreed with, but the rest of the stuff, totally agreed with. Um, Democratic voters, even older Democratic voters, are a lot more in agreement with what we're talking about on this show than what mainstream media is talking about. And you can see the reaction of the CNN host. She was absolutely stunned by all this stuff.